Hello guys and welcome to the third video of the MS Project series. So in this video, we already created the tasks for our project and we already made several changes to it like we already uh, split the tasks, we already created recurring tasks and we already have some inactive tasks and we already linked them. And that technically completes the Gantt chart part of your project. Now, the next thing that you are going to do is you're going to assign resources to the project. So, resources pertain to either people, materials, or other costs associated with certain tasks. So, to start that process, you have to change your view into the resource sheet view. And from here, you can list down all the resources that you are going to use for this project. So let's start with the first type of resource, and that is the person, okay, the people, or the work resource. So let's say we're going to put their name. So we have John, we have Jane, we have Peter, and we have Sheila, for example, as part of our team. And you will see that they will automatically be assigned the resource type of work. Now there are three types of resources, like what I mentioned in MS Project. So the work resource pertain to people, materials pertain to, of course, your items, your supplies, and your cost pertains to other costs that are not work or not items. They will be assigned certain initials. Well, in essence, this, is, uh, this won't really matter that much, so we'll leave that. The next part is the standard rate. So how much do we pay John K per hour? So we have to assign a certain number here. So for example, let's put $40 for John. For Jane, it's, let's say, 45 For Peter, it's 42 And for Sheila, it's 35 We also need to assign an overtime rate, especially if there's a plan for you to render overtime. If there's none, it's still best to put something here. Because you never know, uh, MS Project may calculate a task as an overtime and your cost may not go right if you forgot to put something here. So let's say that for overtime, they're a bit, they're, they are paid a bit higher. Okay. And then the next column is cost per use. This is sort of like the flag down rate of that person if they have any. So some workers have this payment that you have to settle first before they start working for you. So this goes for consultants or other similar jobs. So for now, since these are all team members, let's say that they do not have any cost per use. They are already part of our team. The next one is the accrual. So does it mean that we start billing the person when he or she starts the work? Or does it mean that the billing is when the work has ended? Or is it prorated? Like if the project or the task is ongoing and it's already halfway through the task, does it mean that we pay the person 50% because the task is already 50% complete? Or when the task has started, then we pay the person all the payments that he or she is due depending on the number of days assigned to him or her. And means that the billing will happen after the person completes the task. So it's really up to you how you want this to go or it depends on your policies or your contract with that person. For now, I'll just stick them as prorated. Now, another aspect here is the max capacity or the max allocation of that person or the max units. Now, this pertains to how much of John's time are you allowed to use? So is John dedicated to your task? Or is John also related or connected to another project? So if, for example, Jane has another project and you have to identify then how much of Jane's time you are allowed to use. So let's say that Jane is allowed to use just 50% of her time for you, for your project, and another 50% in another project. Take note that this would matter because remember when we set the project as 8 hours per day. So if we sort of like need people, Jane should only be working 
half of that allotment. And if we force Jane to work more than the time indicated here, more than 50% of her full time, then that would be an overtime. Or it would even cause a warning in MS Project that this person is being overallocated. So that's the first type of resource, the person or the work resource. Now the next type of resource pertain to materials. So I'm just going to put here some materials. I honestly have no idea what uh, materials I could put here. So I'll just put whatever I could think of. So we have cement, we have wood, we have sand maybe, we have um, nails or maybe some steel poles. Okay. And for this kind of items, we have to change the type into material so that we won't be required to provide the a max allocation and the overtime rate because, of course, materials don't render overtime. Okay. And as mentioned, you don't have to allocate max of it. And then we have standard rate, how much the, uh, does each unit cost? So I really do not have an idea how much each of this. So I'm just going to assume some amounts here. So five, four, sand, maybe six, nails, maybe a dollar, steel poles, maybe a little bit more expensive. Now, the next part is cost per use. Similar to the concept of work, do we need to pay something in order to use these items? So I think not. And then we also have the same idea here in the accrue col column we're in. Are we going to consider, uh, consider the material as consumed or paid once we start using it? Or is it something that we only pay once we are done with the task? Or is it prorated? Like if the task is two days and you only used uh, so far for today, it's the first day of the task. So does it mean that we're going to bill for 50% of the total cost of the material? Now, the third type of resource would be the cost resource. So the cost resource pertain to items that are neither work nor materials, and they are usually one-time things, and they, they're they're their price can vary per usage. This could be like, like building permits. They're not material, they're not work, and they can vary per project. That is why you cannot assign a price for this. You will assign this later per task. So let's say we also need to pay some licenses. So that's a cost material. And then we cannot assign because there's a tendency for it to vary. This also includes, for example, uh, taxes, right? So taxes can vary from project to project. So that would be more of a cost rather than a material or work. And let's save this for now. And now we have our resource sheet completed. We're now going to assign resources to the project itself. So we have to go back to the Gantt chart. And then there are actually several ways to assign resources to a project or to a task. For example, for a client meeting, you can right click on that and you should see there assign resources. And you will have a list of all the resources that we have entered before. You will then identify how many of this are we going to use. So for example, we're going to allocate Jane. So one okay so not one percent uh let's say jane would be the one responsible for the entire project and then we have maybe john also helping out in this part of the project and then we're going for some reason for example you're going to use some wood maybe to demonstrate something and then here's the building permit. Let's say we have to assign it, but we'll do that later. Okay. And then we click assign. 
Okay. So right now, we already have assigned the resources using the right-click method. So I'm going to close this. And you will see that the resources are now enumerated in the Gantt chart itself. And if it's a material cost, then there's this number pertaining to the number of items used. So wood, as, in, as we uh, if you remember, we used one unit for this. And then for the next one, we're going to do it for the other. So let's say uh, not all. So let's say I'm going to use the initial construction. And then I'm going to assign resources. And then maybe for John, it's going to be 100%. For Jane, it's going to be 20%. And as you could see, the resources are being calculated based on the amount of time needed for that task. So John's 100% would be equal to that amount. Jane would be at $360 and so on. And then let's assign some materials. So we have sand. Let's say we have 100 units of sand. Remember, we tagged sand as $6. And now it's saying here it's 100 pieces or 100 units, therefore $600. 50 units of cement. For nails, let's say we have 20 units. And that's it. Click Assign. And then click Close. So that's the first way of assigning tasks to projects. So the second way of assigning tasks or resources to projects is you have to scroll to the right and you could also do it here in the resource name column. So instead of going through that, you can also just go here. So let's say let's assign resources to this. You can just drop down from there and check the items or the people that you need to assign to this task. And then now you have your resources okay, assigned in another method. So say cement, we have Jane, John working on this. We have Peter, we have Sheila, and so on. And that's how to assign resources using the second method. The third one is this, assign resources found in the tab. It's just the same as what we have here. It's just it's in the tab, not on the right-click button. Now, the third method is by updating the task information. So let's say we're going to assign resources for inter uh, identification of suppliers. You know, we're just playing around with this project right now. So let's assign resources to that. But instead of doing the assigned resources, we're going to go to the task information. So and it's also found on the right-click option or right-click menu. And this will pop up the task information for that specific task. So you have here the name of the task. We have some predecessors, like what are the tasks that are associated with that? We already did that in the previous video. Now, one tab here says resources. And you can also allocate resources from here. So we have Jane again. We have join for example and then we have cement let's say just for example okay you're assigning resources now here i want to show you that if you choose here one of the third types of um, resource the cost resource like a building permit this is where you're going to allocate your cost to it so let's say the building permit costs 200 dollars and this is where you assign it. Click OK. And let's say that you're going to have another building permit needed here. So we're going to go here, information, and go to the resources. And then let's choose building permit. And I could change the cost because like what I mentioned a while ago, the cost resource, you can change the cost per usage. It's not like a fixed cost like the other materials or the other a resource like the work resource click OK and that's it we now have our resources assigned in our MS project
So for now, that's it. And I hope to see you in the next video in this series. Thank you and please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment and I will try to answer as soon as I can. Thank you and keep safe everyone.